is the S&P 500 retesting the October low? In October of 31, we mentioned two possible paths. A red path, which would have been a crash, or a green path that we were favoring, namely a rebound. So what happened yesterday with the NASDAQ? Well, clearly the NASDAQ and the FANG especially made a lower low. That's bad for a technical analyst. That's usually a bearish sign. You see, however, on the charts, two things. Number one, the lows of January and April were about the same level than the low actually we did yesterday. Second element, we are still within the cloud, this green area, which is normally a little support area. Of course, if it's close below this dotted line, most people believe that the market could, uh, the Nasdaq could go down and drift toward this lower area another 5 to 10 percent. But let's look at what the momentum down there. Here, if we have a rebound in the coming two days, then that's what we show here, we might have a small bullish divergence allowing to gain some time and have a more sizable rebound. And also, we need to look at something else. What is doing the rest of the market? The rest of the market is doing much better. As we can see here, we have the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. And here we have an accumulation distribution line, which is the advances and the decline. And we see that from the October low to mid-November, the green line has been rebounding as well as the market. And now in the direction of the retest, we are far from the above the October low. Not yet at a lower low, but still above. And we see also that the accumulation distribution, the green line, is not yet making a new low. On the unbalanced volume, it's a little bit more tense, I agree. But what does it mean? That means that the wide breadth of the market is doing better than the few FANG stocks which have a large capitalization and which is, are dragging the NASDAQ 100 down. So there is still some hope around. If you look also, for example, the advanced decline line on a cumulative basis, which is the red line that you see here, in August, it makes a higher high compared to the high of January. That usually signals that the market as a whole will not make a top before four to six months after that major high on the red line. So there is still some hope that the market as a whole still can rebound and reach at least the top that it got in January. Now, what is the situation on the S&P 500? The situation is quite tense. As you can see, the VIX has been rebounding a little bit. Not yet at new highs, but it's rebounding. Further, the green line here is looking at the yield of the 10-year is coming down. That means people rush to the bonds as a kind of a safety play, even though the rising tide for interest rate is up. That means that people are afraid of what's happening on the S&P 500. You can see here, yesterday we had a big gap down, and it's coming close to the lower Bollinger Bands. Well, you see here, basically, that the market is already oversold in the last four days. And if this new low is not met with a new low on the oscillators, but is met with a rebound, like the green or the red arrow is showing, then we might have a bullish divergence and we might have gained some time for a rebound, probably toward the 50% level, which is 27, 23, and then a little bit higher to 27.70. If we cross this green area, which is the red cloud, 
then it could go higher along the seasonality from November, December up to March, May of next year. Now, in terms of these small up and downs, we have on the way up just looked at a little bit of a movement up and down. And if we, we see here the lows around 2016, October, the distance between this low and that low, it's about this distance that we have noticed here. Not f a full month, but something about like that. So there is still some hope here on the S&P that even though we might have this afternoon a marginal new low intraday that we closed a little bit above these Bollinger Bands. Tonight, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. We'll see if we have something to say thank you to. And we'll see on Friday. So what's happening in the rest of the world? The rest of the world is, on the one hand, Europe. Europe is not very helpful. As you can see, it's still in a downtrend. And the, but the relative strength is doing better than before. That means instead of coming down here, the black line is making a flat range and starting to test soon this descending trend line. So there is some hope as well here. Also, same situation on the momentum side. If there is a rebound and the U European market follow the US market a little bit at least, then we will have some kind of information that on the momentum side help us bet for a rebound. Japan looks a little bit better. Look at that. We are still in a trading range. It's horizontal here. But uh, the relative strength is doing a little bit better. It tries to do a little bit better than the S&P 500. So the Nikkei tends to outperform slightly the S&P 500, despite the fact that the yen is not very weak. That's your orange line, which is still about flat. It's, you could argue that it is a little bit down, but not much. Same situation on the momentum. Nothing to say here. It will be a global rebound or no rebound at all. Now, emerging market. Emerging market, <coughs> that was the wild card in the sense that <coughs> if you look at the beginning of January all the way to now, it has been in the downtrend, very clearly. Slowdown of, US, of global growth. You noticed also the relative strength on orange here versus the S&P 500 has been coming down, but now it's starting to rebound a little bit. So maybe the whole cycle was that first outside in the emerging market the growth slowed down then it came to Europe and then finally it was perceived in the US and that the US is the last domino to correct not to crash so we are still here a little bit hopeful even though here on the S&P 500 we notice that it is close to the levels that we are at in February on a closing basis okay that's a black line <clears throat> Where could the salvation come from? Well, here we have the US dollar index in black candles. And here we have a long-term downtrend line and everybody was bullish dollar. Bullish dollar was not too good for emerging market because some of the emerging market are indebted in dollars. So rising dollars means they have to repay their debt at a higher price. However, look at what's happening between August and right now. This breakthrough here is not having a lot of follow through. That means that this new high could be reversed and has been reversed last week. And that could mean possibly a pullback a little bit lower along what the momentum is suggesting as it happened exactly in August. And that could help the S&P 500 rebound this afternoon, but it has to happen this afternoon. I'll see you next month.